I'm a jail. I spent my time there for acting on my beliefs. Therefore, I think of this, this is a badge of honor, okay? I'm never taking it off. But this mall, this mall is the real jail. And the stores in there, there are true jailers. We are locked up, yes, in the parameters of their marketing strategies. And it is sucking out our souls. Okay, what happened to him? What that Nothing. This is what he's I mean, always on. like. You know what? Hey, hey, you know what? We're not people, right? We're just part of a demographic. And all the humanity that you have lost, you cannot buy back in one of those stores, okay? And, and that cell phone with its personalized ring, that is not a statement of individuality. He's Come he's on! Get throw it away! Come on, arrested. people! He likes going to court. You know, Free it seems yourself. like you've been like being please, in jail. Please, 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 please. Do you really think that that pillow from a yuppie emporium is going to complete you as a person? I mean, I know it's an expression of your taste in household accessories, but do you really think it says anything other than that you are a complete, shallow idiot? Okay, you better get in there and just tell him to cool it. No, Come on. Hey, that's why you're here. here. He's your client. Don't do he fired people. me. Don't well do done. Me. Come He's on, James. And don't like you see? Don't you see? Come on, those things—they mark you just as sure as if you were wearing an armband. That's right. This city is a ghetto, a ghetto of the ridiculous. Its infrastructure deteriorating while the richest of its citizens are exhausting themselves in a mad frenzy of acquisition. Oh, God, how I hate you all. Go home. Stop shopping. Come on. Right up Cameron. home or something. Cameron. What? What? Oh, I know you. You're one of James's minions, right? We just wanted well, to advise you that what you're doing could be perceived as trespassing or maybe even we, public mischief. We, well, uh, and then... Oh, oh, hello. hello. Hey, everybody. It's the Asian Johnny Cochran. Well, you know what? After your last attempt at advising me, I think I'm going to pass. It's too late anyways. Oh, everybody relax. Good news. The police are here, yes? Yes, now that our streets are completely safe, the police are free to spend their time harassing concerned citizens. Sir, we hey, want you all right, here. okay. Anybody Easy. Else? What am I doing? Sort of. Doing Any chance you could just persuade him to move on? Huh? We tried that yesterday. Okay. Okay. Yesterday? Just standing here. Okay, lest you perceive that I am resisting arrest, I am going to move very slowly now, okay? It's not either very slowly to the ground. Um, we're fine. Everybody, please. Listen, I, I've been meaning to call you because I don't like the way things ended. I was kind of hoping that maybe we might... I'm not in front of the gathering crowd, okay? But I'm going to do that. I'm going to call you. Whatever. Okay, let's get him out of here. Okay, okay, okay. Please note, please note. I am totally passive and I am unarmed. I am unarmed. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, because I know how hard it is for you to tell the difference between talking and resisting arrest. So please just don't beat me to a pulp, okay? And especially in front of all these people. I really don't like that. I know. You're not thinking about getting back together, are you? Does that bother you? Oh, you mean Ian? Because it won't work out. He's always going to want to put them in jail, and you're always going to want to get them out. And you're always going to think he lacks compassion, and he's always going to think that you're... Speaking of getting them out, they didn't have to do this. Hey! Excuse me, sorry. Hey! Hang on a second! judge is going to think that you went into the dealership to trash the car because you were trying to make a statement, right, against wealth or capitalism or a consumer. Listen, I have got nothing against any of those things. Nah, uh, he decided to trash a $90,000 vehicle because somebody made fun of him. You'd think he'd be used to that by now. Uh, so you're not, uh, you're not an anti-establishment uh, anarchist? No. Uh, okay, and, and you don't dress like that because you're trying to scare people? It's just a style. No, it's not just a style. It's a way to come to grips with the darkness within. Make it beautiful. Wow. They see dressing like that as a way to express their inner pain. Uh, oh, yeah? You, you've got uh, inner pain, Duncan? Oh, I used to. Big time. You know, I was an awkward child. You know, just different. Yeah, me too. Kids at school, they treated me like a freak. So I just decided to eventually dress the part. It was an act of defiance at the time, but, but now... 
I can't imagine not doing it. Yeah, well, you know, you wouldn't be who you are, right? He's also a husband, a father, a successful businessman with two hair salons and a new upscale spa. I think you might want to stress some of those things as well. Sure, but... You uh, might find this all very interesting, but really, this is something most people do in their 20s and then move well, on. Well, like you did. Because it was just a fashion statement for you, Maddie, and for me... It, it was, was an act of defiance, I know, but I never thought you'd keep it up for 20 years. And now you could be going to jail because you're freaked out on someone for making a joke about I'm it. I'm used to people making comments all the time, but this is different, okay? This guy was a nasty jerk. What happened to being supportive? Oh, I am supportive. But that doesn't mean that I don't think this was really stupid. Okay, look, I love you. I do. And there are times that I still think that the way you dress is really cool, okay? But sometimes it can also be very... Really inconvenient? Stressful! We're opening a spa in two days, okay? Now, that would be more than enough stress for most people. But no. Now we have to go through this trial. It's not about the trial, and it's not about the spa. She just wants me to give it up, right, so we can fit into our neighborhood, and she can hang with her wealthy girlfriends, and their husbands, and their golf shirts, and their chino pants. I just want to be able to have the neighbors over right, and for a gonna, barbecue. If they're not going to come over because of how I dress, then... Them. Oh, come on! No, I'm serious. And if that's all that you care about... Richard, is it? If you can, can you ask me to completely change who I am just to make those assholes more comfortable, f*** you too, Maddie. Okay, you know what? Right now, you're the asshole, okay? A selfish, inflexible, colossal asshole! Uh, I don't know you well enough to comment on you. No, you're not on a cell. Son of a bitch! Well, maybe he thought he was supposed to be meeting you somewhere else. Where? I don't know when the trial starts. I don't even know what courtroom it's in. He was supposed to meet me at my place last night to fill me in. Well, maybe he had to fill somebody else in. Oh, I bet he did. So now what, is he even going to show up? Oh, he will definitely show up. He's very professional in his own way. I'm going to jail. I know it. I've got this little f***ing bitch saying these lies about me. And what do I do? I hire a lawyer I used to sleep with because mm. I thought he cared more. Son of a bitch, where is he? Whoa, what's all the yelling about? Hey, Lee, how you doing? She's a bit... Oh, mm. How am I doing... Did you hear that? She's not doing very well. What the hell's wrong with you, Jack? Where were you last night? What time? I mean, I was at a lot of different places. You were supposed to be with me talking about the trial. Before, I got you covered. You're not worried, are you? Yeah, I'm worried. They've got my ex and this bitch saying that I drugged and kidnapped her, and all I got is me saying I didn't. Well, you've also got me, don't you? Hmm? Oh, right, mister. Trust me. It's a bullshit case. I got the crown and withdraw the charges. No problem. Well, I like to take a positive approach to begin with. When that fails, well, you know, you figure something else. Oh, yeah. You go out and screw anything and get your hands off. Everyone has their own way of relieving tension. It's how I prepare myself for a trial, especially if it involves someone I, uh, care about. You piece of shit liar. Someone you care about, please. Did you hear that? Honey, would you like a glass of water? No, I don't want a glass of f***ing water. I just, I just want this over with. Okay, then stop blubbering. Let's get going. Come on. What are you waiting for? Asshole. We go back a bit. Used to dance with one of my favorite clubs. I like her, but she's always been a little fragile. Yeah, fragile. Okay, oh, let's go. I'm not hey, how you doing, Neil? Hey, beautiful. Hey, good. Uh, not now. I just need not to now. Come back when I'm finished. Look, I just need to get my tie. No, you don't. Look, it's, on, it's on my lucky tie. Okay, my client's mother's coming, and I wore that tie the first time I got her son off. So she thinks it's a, a good luck charm. It's not. It's a tie. Look, you know that, and I, and I guess I know that. But if I don't have that tie on when she gets here, well, this woman is a little scary. Okay, so please, can I just your lucky tie even be in my office? Uh, our office, and I used to keep it in my wooden filing cabinet. But when it collapsed, I put all the contents in those garbage bags that are. Uh... Oh, right. I threw those bags out. Please, please don't say that. They they were my files. How was I supposed to know that? You, you could have asked. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. The, the tie's gone. The tie's gone. The tie's gone, Mr. Rupert. So what are you going to do? I mean, what can you do, really? What could you possibly do to me, Mrs. Rupert? Oh, god. oh my god. This is not good. Cool. No, no, just take it easy. This Don't is bad. Very bad. I was, I was cleaning out my office, right? And I didn't want anything to happen to it. You know that you are supposed to be wearing that tie every time you see me right from the start. That's why good things happen for my son. I know, I know, I know, but you're, you're early, so I haven't... Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. You're not supposed to be here yet, Mrs. Rupert. So listen, listen, why don't you go get a coffee? And by the time you get back, I'll be in my office with a clear head waiting for you and wearing my tie just like before. And um, we'll pretend that you were never here in the first place. So this never happened. Exactly. It never happened. This better work. Mm -hmm. Have a sandwich uh, as well, just in case I can't get in there anytime soon. You know what? Garbage. All you have to do is 
give the man a refund for his muffler and sign a peace bond and the charges will be withdrawn. I will give him a credit note. No, it can't be a credit note. It has to be a refund. He can only have a credit note. You told me you wanted this thing resolved as quickly as possible. A refund is an admission of bad work. It increases my humiliation. This man came into my shop, swore at me in front of my employees. He called me dirty names. He threw things around and I got to give him a refund? That's justice? What about the damage he did to my shop? Does he have to pay for any of that? No. Why not? At issue is who started the fight. He says that you sold him a defective part, and when he asked for his money back, you tried to physically remove him from your shop. Because he wouldn't leave. And, you know, he punched me. He says you punched him first. So, you see the problem? No. We can't prove that your version is what happened. So, we're just kind of... I have a witness. So does he. Big deal. It's his wife. Yes. And you have an employee. And we can all go to trial, and they can both testify and cancel each other out, and that'll cost you three thousand dollars or you can agree to the peace bond and it'll cost you 225 plus the refund yes mm, i'll give him the credit no <laughs> uh. This is uh, Cameron Tierney. Yes, Mr. Tierney is charged with willfully using his mind to provoke social and civic enlightenment. Now, actually, the charges are public mischief and causing disturbance, Your Worship. He was picked up accosting shoppers at the Eaton Center. Your Worship. Oh, that is funny. That is Because you're not a real judge, right? I mean, you're not even actual lawyer. You're an appointed bureaucrat. I mean, one day you're a lackey for some municipal politician arranging his encounters with teenage hookers, and then boom! One day you're the guardian, the gatekeeper for the criminal justice system. Cameron. And I can tell you with certainty that there is nobody in this room that even comes close to worshipping you on any level, and that includes me. I'm crushed, Mr. Tierney. DeRay, initial A, for the record, your worship, I'm here for Mr. Tierney. No, no, she's not. Cameron, I just want to help. Oh, well... Well, that is very touching, okay? If you really want to help, you know what you can do? You can talk to his worshipfulness in a language he understands, all right? Why don't you offer him a bribe? I mean, what's the going rate these days, huh, Baldy? It's unfortunate that this is such a joke to you, Mr. Tierney, because given you're on a release, the onus is on you to justify bail. Oh, oh, really? Oh, great. And worshipful one, because I've been in jail for a while, so I didn't realize that the Charter of Rights had been repealed. I mean, I've just been arrested for talking! No, for screaming. I was talking! You're screaming! Mr. Turney has been accosting shoppers in the Eaton Center for some time now, and has been doing so quite loudly. Yeah! yeah. Well, most of them are almost entirely brain dead, so it takes a little bit of energy to rouse them up. What exactly are you trying to accomplish, Mr. Tierney? I am trying to save the world, a wise and omnipotent one. I'm beginning to think that this is a matter for 102. Well, doesn't he have to have a history of mental illness for that? Are you listening to him, Mr. Weeks? Are we even in the same courtroom? Room 102, isn't that the place in 1984 where people went to get Orchard. No, that's 101. I love that book. Mr. Weeks, do not encourage him. Hey, you leave Mr. Weeks alone. He reads. I mean, he's got legal training, and that's a lot more than you can say about yourself, huh? Cameron, 102 is where we deal with people who have what? fitness issues. You know? Well, uh, what, an insanity defense? You... Uh, you know, that's not a bad idea. I mean, maybe you're not as much of an idiot as I thought you were because I have a lot to say about the high incidence of schizophrenia in our urban wastelands. In the meantime, yeah! Yeah, yeah, I'm flat out nuts! Yeah, why don't we take me away to this mental health place? Come on, great wizard! Make it happen! I'm going! I'm going! I'm not... Yes. Thank you! It's not me, it's not the tie, it's her son that's got the luck. Now, the first time I represented him was on a possession charge and he got off because the Crown failed to properly test the cocaine. Yeah. Then there's a the theft charge and the security guard didn't show up to testify. And this last time was a and e and the Crown uh, failed to file the proper paperwork. I mean, it's pure luck, Ronnie, you well, know? He can't be that lucky or he wouldn't get caught in the first place. Do you think it's the tie? Well, you well, must have had something to do with it. Well, I, I did ask for the cocaine to be analyzed. Well, there you, there you go. You see, you're a better lawyer than you think you are. Thank so you why don't you just forget about the stupid... Uh, yeah, you know, I'm just gonna explore. Oh my I God. see you in that tank, but I still don't see no time. Now, you better not come out of there without it unless you want me getting upset. You hear me? Yes. I was talking to him. Hi, so what's happening? I don't think she's coming. Uh, that's okay. You know what? I just kind of wanted to have her in the courtroom just to make you look more normal. Uh, 
No. Oh, no. Look, 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 don't worry about it. I'm sure that judge has seen lots of freaky people in it. Yeah, no, he has. But he, he just tends to put those people in, in prison. That's all. You know, th this judge is... Uh, hey, do you think we could do something with the makeup? I mean, does it have to be so pale? It represents the serene beauty of death. Wow. Okay. And, and goths like death because... Uh, it's inevitable. It's, it's very real. Right. Okay, and the black? I mean, the, the, the dramatic black hair and the black clothes. It, I'm just asking because it seems, you know, very vampire-like, right? Or satanic or so. Hey, can I tell him that it's pagan? I mean, what? Well, it's just because pagan is a religion of a sort, right? I mean, maybe if I just... Can I tell him it's pagan? You can, but it's, it's not historically accurate. You mean it's a lie? Okay, you know what? I'm not going to bring it up. Yeah, yeah I'm just going to ignore it, and then we'll just see how that plays. I was with the customer trying to close a deal when that guy... What's his name again? Mr. Armstrong. Yeah. He came over and told me that he wanted to take a car out for a test drive. I thought he was part of a circus, some sort of clown. Uh, Your Honor, could you perhaps ask him to refrain from insulting my client? How's that insulting, Mr. Sachs? You think being compared to a clown is somehow denigrating? I happen to be very fond of clowns, as well you know. Oh, yeah. Classic clowns in particular, some marionettes. Excuse and... me, Your Honor, may I continue? Sure. I think I made my point. So he told you he wanted to take the car, the VX900, for a test drive. And I told him he'd have to wait until I'd finished with my customer. A anyway, I thought it was a joke. Because of how he looked? It's a $90,000 luxury vehicle. We get kids coming in all the time, goofing around, wanting to drive these cars, and there's no possible way they can afford them. But Mr. Armstrong said he wanted to buy a car, didn't he? Well, he says that now. Respectfully, Your Honor, the defense will get a chance to cross-examine the witness once I've finished. It's the judge's prerogative to ask questions. Sometimes it helps the defense, sometimes it helps the Crown. It just depends on how the ball bounces. Mr. Sachs, you have any problem with my asking questions? Well, no, absolutely not. Uh, but if I may, I would like to uh, clarify my earlier clown comment. The damage is done, Mr. Sachs. Sit down. Ms. Menon, you finished with this witness? Are you, Your Honor? Oh, careful now. Just get on with it. My pleasure. So, Mr. Taunton, you told him he'd have to wait, and what happened? He flipped out. He ripped off a windshield wiper and started smashing the car with it. When I tried to stop him, he started beating me. It hurt. I almost passed out. How much... Why? Why? <sighs> Go ahead. How much damage was done to the car? It cost $10,000 to fix it, and that was mainly for the paint job. And we can't sell it for the full sticker price anymore because it's been repaired. It has to be sold as a pre-owned vehicle, so we'll probably lose about $20,000. Why'd you get in the way? Sorry? Why not just call the police? He was trashing a VX900. It's a $90,000 car. And you had some kind of emotional bond with it? What was the other customer doing, just standing around watching? No, he called the police on his cell phone. Well, that's something. Usually they just stand around and watch. That makes me feel better knowing that. Miss Menon? Your Honor. You finished? Yes. All right, Mr. Sachs. Mr. Totten, what were you doing when uh, my client uh, walked into the showroom? I already said I was trying to close a sale with a client. Actually, were you talking about golf? Oh, we talked about golf for a while. It's part of being a good salesman. Hmm. Find something you have in common... Put the guy at ease. Well, that, that's nice. Uh, and did you try to uh, find something uh, in common with my client? And what would that possibly be? I'm sure you both hate uh, taxes, right? I'm sure you both hate the government. I'm sure you both uh, complain about uh, the weather, you know, as most Canadians do. Your Honor, what's the point? The point, Your Honor, is his, clearly is his prejudice. Mr. Totten, your little chat about golf went on for 25 minutes while my client waited, waited very patiently for you to assist him. With his other man, you discussed in painstaking detail 18 holes of a private golf course north of Toronto. You talked about uh, curing your slice and your, uh, your new sand wedge and whether to use the 10 iron off the uh, fairway or whatever. The 10 iron's a putter. Okay, well, I, I don't golf. I'm sure you don't. Oh, ooh, there it goes again, that prejudice. You're a very judgmental person, aren't you, sir? No wonder you upset my client. Upset him so much he had no choice but to trash a VX900, please. You know, I wish people would stop referring to the VX900 as if it were a holy relic. It's, it's a $90,000 car, Your Honor. Did you, sir, make any comments about the way my client was dressed when he asked if he could uh, test drive this car, this $90,000 car? I never said a word to him about the way he looked. No, you, well, you actually you said it to the other guy. Right? Something about uh, Dracula, another comment about... The uh, Adams family. Yeah, the Adams family, right? Jesus, what is this? 
If I came to work wearing my wife's clothes and a wig, my buddies would razz the shit out of me. Well, exactly. And then he'd have a choice, wouldn't he? He could, he could either take it or start smashing things and wind up here. I, I wasn't finished. Yeah, I thought that was kind of rude, too. When I do it, it's rude. But when he does it, it's just, what, clowning around? Hey, what did I just say about gratuitous clown references? He has a right to finish his cross-examination. Go ahead, Mr. Sack. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Totten, why... Or no, in the... Sh uh, no. Yeah, yeah, lost my train of thought now. Um, yes. Uh, no, it's gone now. No. Uh, no, my, my brain is completely empty now. What a tragedy. I have a big problem. Mm-hmm. Your oldest son again? No, my two youngest. They went and got themselves arrested. Oh, I am sorry to hear that. It's a good thing I found a tie, though, huh? <laughs> I tried to tell them, no, but... No, no, don't blame yourself. I hmm? don't blame myself. <laughs> Not my fault they got caught. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry? They got caught and went crying to the police like babies, saying, our mother made us go into that store. Our mother made us. And now the police are telling me I'm a party. A party to their crimes? Sure, I gave them some instruction, but then they went and did it on their own. Yeah, but giving someone instruction on how to commit a... I, I'm sorry, are you implicating yourself in a crime here? Because if you are... This is how it happens. We go looking through the recycling for receipts for things that have been purchased with cash. Then I send the two boys into the store, and they take the thing off the shelf, and they go to the cashier, and they get the cash back for the thing. But this time, the fools, they take the thing off the shelf right in front of a security guard. No, 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 what no, no, do no, you no, shouldn't be hearing this at all. This is so we'll pretend that I didn't tell you. But before we do that, I'll tell you now. I am the one who needs some of your good luck magic, so let me rub that thing. Uh, yeah, okay. Is it, uh, working? Get all jumpy and freaked out. The judge sees you, maybe starts thinking you have something to be freaked out about. You're saying people are calm at their trials? I don't think so. No, you shouldn't look calm. That'll just come across like you're suppressing guilt. Look, look concerned but confident. Give the judge a reason to bind your version of the story. Sell your innocence. Hey! Well, where are you going? I'm gonna wipe that smile off her face. No, that's not what we do when we're trying to sell our innocence. We don't assault the alleged victim. You said I was your friend, the family you never had, an older <laughs> sister. You despicable piece of garbage. She gets young girls off the street, she makes friends with them, buys them meals, buys them crack to make them feel better, and once they're addicted, she says that they owe her, that they have to work it off. Is that what happened with you? Yeah. Miss Hausman has a number of youth entries for communicating and possession. You can carry on. She was really nice at first. She'd take me to her apartment and we'd hang out, and then she took me to this place on Gerard Street, the shitty little one-room apartment. There were like six other girls there all strung out on crack or meth, and then she told me that's where I was going to be working. She told me what I was going to be doing. I'm sorry, this is really hard for me to talk about. Oh, please. Shut up. Don't laugh, don't breathe, don't move a muscle. Got it? Problem, Mr. Angel? No, Your Honor. So, she told you what she expected you to do, and you... Started doing it. I was living at this group home because of my probation, and I'd leave there every day and go to this apartment and have sex with these guys that Lee brought in. Sometimes she would come to bring us drugs or food, but mostly she was just there to get her money, which was almost everything we got. The only good thing was that she didn't beat us like some other pimps. So this one time, one girl tried to run away, and Lee wanted us to stand in a circle and kick her, but I wouldn't. Lee started screaming at me, said that if I didn't do it, I'd be next. So is that why you decided to run away? Yeah. I freaked and ran out, and I'm running down the street, and Lee drives up beside me, says she's sorry for threatening me, and that she wants to give me a ride back to the group home. So I got in, and she gave me a Mickey of vodka to calm me down, and I took a drink. What the liar. Yeah, she's very good. Well, there must have been something in the booze because when I woke up, we were on the 401. I start screaming and Lee punches me a bunch of times in the head and knocked me out. When I woke up, I was in some guy Emile's apartment in Montreal. And where was Lee? Gone. I mean, she just left me with this total stranger and I had no idea what he was going to do to me. And what did he do? Mostly, he just left me alone. But every night, Lee would call and say, I want to hear that bitch scream. Then he had to beat me. How'd you get back to Toronto? About three weeks later, Lee came back to get me. She asked me if I learned my lesson, and I said, yeah, so she took me back. My brother's always rejected most of the things the rest of us accept as truth. It's made him a rather solitary figure. You mean he has no friends? Well, people give up, don't they? And no other family? Well, none that will acknowledge him. He was married briefly, but it didn't work. 
during the wedding vows, he actually stopped to point out the lies inherent in the institution of marriage. And uh, when I said, till death do you part, Cameron laughed out loud. Six months later, he explained to his wife that uh, he would never, under any circumstances, bring a child into this world. That pretty much ended things. How does he support himself? Money's never been a problem for him. For a while, he bought and sold real estate, traded currency, a few things like that. He just figured out how to do. And then when he had enough to live on, he just stopped. Stopped working? Stopped everything, except reading. And talking? Oh, you should see his house. Uh, furniture from Goodwill, and mattress on the floor, and books. Thousands of books, magazines, academic journals. Do you think that something's wrong with him? Of course. Okay, listen, they're probably going to want a doctor to interview him, and then... He hasn't accepted Jesus. And then we'll probably need your help when it comes to bail. Have you? Have I what? Accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Ah, uh, well, I'm not looking for a personal Savior right now. Of course now. you are, you just don't know it. Hey, I'll tell you what, as long as I'm uh, here to help Cameron, how about I minister to your needs too? That's <laughs> sort of a two-for-one special. <laughs> for today only. <laughs> Think about it. All the things you must see here, the lost souls you must encounter, your inner spirit must be shriveling up from a lack of sustenance. Yeah, well, I... Uh... Think about it. Where's the little boy's room? Yeah, you know what? You're goddamn right. It upsets me. Because you know what? You want to buy some clothes? You can pick between Old Navy, The Gap, Banana Republic. Three stores, all owned by the same company. You know, toothpaste, coffee, uh, newspapers, television. It's the same thing. All we really have is the illusion of choice. All right? And people, they need to be made aware of that. And that's your responsibility. No, no. It's my pleasure. It makes me feel like I'm actually, you know, contributing to society as opposed to, to paying taxes, which, which is just it's bullshit. But if it's so pleasurable, then why the rage? It's from the rage that I derive the pleasure. The better question is why the complete absence of rage from everybody else. I mean, all the, the petty bullshit, the greed, and people, they're just bending over. They're taking it, you know? People should be spewing rage all day long, yeah? What about you, huh? Come on, what's behind that smug, educated veneer? I'm gonna piss you off. Just a tiny bit. You have to sit there. You have to talk to assholes like me all day long, huh? Just a tiny bit. Yeah. Why didn't she just kill you? Your Honor. Mr. Angel. This seems more in keeping with what we've heard about my client's personality. I mean, it's not like you were a valuable commodity. You said she picked girls off the street. Well, there's dozens of them out there like you, right? I don't think she needs to answer that question. Okay, yeah, let's not bother with that one. Here's one you can answer. On the day you supposedly arrived back in Toronto, you returned to the group home, right? Yeah, Lee dropped me off. So she kidnapped you, drugged you, had you beaten, then took you home? I promised I wouldn't go to the police. Oh, you promised. And she took your word. <laughs> She's a conniving pimp and a drug supplier who has so far managed never to be arrested for either of those things. But really, she's an idiot. The cops arrested you when you got back to Toronto, huh? Yeah. For breaching your probation? Yeah. So you told them where you'd been? Yeah. Because if you hadn't, you'd have gone to jail, right? Yeah, but it was the truth. Promise? Where are the other girls? What girls? The other underage prostitutes that my client supposedly recruited. No one's been able to locate them. Well, then she sent them away. Vacation? Yeah. Maybe she killed them. Sorry. Let's forget about the girls. What about the apartment you supposedly worked out of? I gave the police the address. There's a Sri Lankan family living there. Well, then she moved them, didn't she? Because she knew you'd tell the police? Yeah. But you promised not to. And <laughs> she took you home, too. I mean, she's worse than an idiot. She's almost brain dead. Uh, but moving right along. How long have you known Miss Sullivan? Six months. And you only started working as a prostitute after you met her? Yeah. Then how come your record has a communicating charge from 18 months ago? Well, I, I tried it a couple of times before I met Liam. I was living on the street. I needed to do something. Oh, I'm sure you always need to do something. And that usually involves lying. So, you know, for a change, let's try the truth. Isn't it true that you met my client at the club where she dances, and when you tried to get an audition, no. the manager wouldn't let you, but Lee befriended you, and when she went to Montreal, she let you come along because you were desperate to get away from the group home. Excuse me, where is this coming from? They got to Montreal. She came on to my client's boyfriend. He took her into his loving embrace. Lee found out, and she took off back to Toronto. Your Honor. Okay. That's enough, Mr. Angel. Oh, yes, it is. For the rest of the story, we're going to need to hear from the boyfriend himself. So, bring it on. So, any thoughts? Because I'm really washed. 
Just tell her you can't represent her. Oh, no, no, I can't do that. Why not? Because she scares him. Is that true? Yes. Also, she's playing a lie on her oath, and I think I have an obligation to stop her. Well, don't put her on the stand. Yeah, it's up to the Crown to prove that she was party to the crime, and if all they've got is her two idiot sons. Right, so basically I should... Do nothing. You okay with that? It's a specialty. Or you could talk to the Crown. About what? Anything that'll keep it out of court. Hmm. Your witnesses are criminals with very long records, and aside from the fact that they have zero credibility, my client is appalled that her own children would implicate her in their, their criminal scheming just to, to mollify their degree of guilt. I mean, it's one thing for a mother to have sons who are crooked, but she's, she's just heartbroken. Yeah, okay. Okay, what? I'll withdraw the charges. But only because she's heartbroken. <laughs> I waited for close to an hour for him. He never had any intentions of helping me. How did you know that? You want to sell someone something, you don't treat them like shit. Now, if I'd been wearing a business suit, he would have been licking my ass. So, uh, so I, I just think he was trying to provoke me. He wanted you to display some of your punk-style rage. Well, actually, Mr. Armstrong's not a punk. Uh, he's a goth, and goths tend to be non-violent. No, not this one. He must be a hybrid. Now, you see how it works, Miss Menon? You take a hit, he takes a hit. Eventually, it all evens out. What if anything was said to you, Mr. Armstrong, while you were waiting to be served? Nothing. But during a little brief pauses in their golf seminar, he would look towards me, he would laugh. He would make stupid, ghoulish faces. I mean, people don't do the stuff that he was doing unless they're trying to, you know... I provoke you. Or uh, hurt me. So you felt hurt. I, I don't know what I was feeling. Uh, hurt and mad, yeah. I, I also assaulted. I went into the place to drop 90 grand on a car, and he humiliated me. I mean, that's, that's a kind of assault, I think. I think so, too. I think it's an assault against your person and your psyche and your, your spirit. Who knows? Maybe even uh, your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's enough. Well, I was going to say, Your Honor, your soul. It was an assault against your soul. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, now that you said it, you think it helped your case any? It felt like an attack. It, it hurt like an attack on who I choose to be. Now, I probably went too far, but he needed to be taught about respect. Do you feel like you treated Mr. Taunton with respect? Initially, yes. What sort of business do you run, sir? My wife and I have uh, two hair salons, and we're, uh, we're just opening a new spa. So how would you feel if one of your customers trashed your business because they were dissatisfied with the service? That's not likely to happen. Is that because your clientele is more civilized than you are? You know, sir, I think you expect to feel out of place and be treated differently, even ridiculed, because you're at odds with society, and I think that you were looking for a confrontation when you went in to buy the, the VX900. See? There you go again. The way you just said the VX900, like it was a holy relic. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how your honor would like me to say it. Well, try to say it like you would Hyundai or Ford. I don't think I've ever had occasion to use those words, but I'll certainly try. So, sir, what do you say? You were just looking for a fight, were you? Your Honor, if my client were uh, black or gay or a woman, uh, or a black gay woman, <laughs> especially, uh, he would have no problem, okay, finding a lawyer to represent him in a discrimination case against this man here. It's this man who is at odds with society, okay, or at least what society should be. He thought that my client could not afford the vehicle. And, and that's what it was all about. It was about the money, the money, the money. Isn't that sad? Yes, it is. It has almost nothing to do with the matter before us, but it's very sad. Because I had a cathartic moment with the cell phone company several months ago. Before you were put in jail? Yes, and you were an essential part of that injustice, as I recall. Oh, you flatter me. I was there, but you did most of the work. Back to my story, okay? A semi-literate teenager was trying half-heartedly to explain to me why I couldn't terminate my cell phone plan. He's pausing every ten minutes to take a, a telephone call from some other irate customer, and it suddenly occurred to me how sad and corrupt the world must be to enable the phone company to have me buy the balls like this. You know what? We talk about poverty. We talk about global warming and terrorism. But this, this is the real problem. And we are never going to be free until it all ends. Until what ends? Until the flood comes and wipes everything away. Things can't keep going on like this. In that sense, he's absolutely right. And who are you, sir? He's a Christ-besotted idiot. He's Mr. Tierney's brother, Your Honor, and he's willing to act as surety if a release can be arranged. Whoa! Hey, if living with him is my only option, 
I pick jail. Well, that settles that. Who's next? Maybe before we let Mr. Tierney here uh, determine his own fate, we should listen to what the doctor has to say. I'm inclined to think that there likely is a mental health explanation for both his anger and his delusions of grandeur. Delusions of grandeur. I mean, what the hell is that supposed to mean? That you've been standing on street corners convinced that you're Socrates. Yeah, a man condemned to his death for having unpopular opinions. Only Socrates didn't yell at people till they cried. How do you know that, huh? Were you there? Oh, Cameron, stop this. You need help. You're on to me, I speak. No, no, no. Go ahead, sir. I just want to say... Wait for it now. Wait notwithstanding the doctor's clinical explanation, that I truly believe that my brother's atheism is the real root of his problem. The preceding message has been paid for by the nut bars for Christ. All opinions expressed are theirs and theirs alone. And we are not... Okay, sir. We are not responsible for any psychological damage it may have caused. You want to let me take him home. Let me do what I should have done years ago. He means lobotomize me, okay? Okay, this is enough. I mean, fun is fun, but I didn't do anything wrong. You can't keep me here. I have, I have been very, very patient with this whole mental health exercise. But right now, I would just like to pay my fine and get the hell out of here. Sorry, your fine's not going to do the trick. You've demonstrated yourself to be a potential physical threat. How did you come up with that, Howdy Doody? What if Mr. Tierney agrees to plead guilty on the mischief charge? Could we arrange for a conditional sentence with provisions? As long as one of them is that he obtains psychiatric help. What, for expressing independent thought? You can't be serious. I'm very serious, sir. And it's your only way out of here. Could he take spiritual counseling as well? Paul, sit down and you shut up, or I'm going to tell everybody here what you used to do with most of your time before you found Jesus. Jesus found me, and he found me because I was a sinner. Did he find you in the garage, whacking off? Because that is how everyone else found you. Huh? Okay. Do I have to live with him? Do I? No, you Good. just have Good. to agree to regular visits to a psychiatrist. Mr. Tierney. Many people grapple with all the hypocrisy and corruption in the world without resorting to harassing people in the street. And the fact that there may be a psychological cause for your passion is something you need to explore. I'm imposing a court order requiring you to seek treatment, and I urge you to comply with this court order, because I'd hate to see you back here one day in real trouble. Which is a credit? No, it's not good enough. It has to be a refund. Well, then the greedy bastard gets nothing. He ruined that muffler by driving too fast over a speed bump. You know, I'm not going to be taken advantage of like this. So what do you want to do then? I don't want my day in court. Then I want $3,000. Why? That's what I charge to do a trial. That's too much. What about the thousand I already gave you? What'd you do to earn that? I got you a deal. A deal I don't want. Yeah, because you're too stubborn to give the man a refund. You'd rather have a criminal record. I'm innocent. Until the judge finds you guilty. Let's make our own deal. Uh-huh. I go to trial and I get the same result you negotiated for me. I'll pay you your three thousand. Uh -huh. But if I get off, I owe you nothing. If you get off, it'll be because of work that I did for you. Work I need to be paid for. So it's all about the money. Uh. Yeah, you're taking advantage of my misfortune for your personal gain. Okay. You need to find yourself another lawyer. I already paid you. And I did my job. I got you a deal. A deal I don't want. Give him a refund. No! Oh! Yeah! He called me in the middle of the night, told me she was on her way, and she needed me to do something for her. And did she say what that was? No. I asked. She just yelled at me. You'll find out when I get there. And she told me to stay put, which I did. Then she... Got to my place around 5 in the morning. How'd she look? She looked like crap. She was all wired and freaking out. Was she alone? I thought so, but then she made me come with her to her car, and there was a girl sleeping in the front seat. Christy Hausman? Yeah. How'd she look? She had a bruise on her forehead, black eye. What happened next? Lee made me carry her inside, told me to put her in a closet and barricade the door. I asked what's going on. She told me that Christy was planning to go to the cops on her, so she wanted me to keep her there and put her back in line. Meaning? Scared the shit out of her. Why'd she come to you for that purpose? She knows I have history. You know, record, assault, a few other things. So she knew you could do the job? Yeah. Originally, you were co-accused of Miss Sullivan, right? Yeah. And in exchange for your testimony, the Crown agreed to drop all the charges against you. That's correct. You must have taken a fancy to you. Your Honor. Well, I've been doing this for a while, and when you see a sweetheart deal like this being given to an abusive lout like Amelia, what was it? His engaging smile? I don't know who you think you're dealing with, buddy, but I am not. Okay, let's just... Is your whole family wacko? Your Honor, I'm going to assume that unprovoked slur was directed at my cousin, Elliot Sachs, and on his behalf, I'd really like to say... All right, that's enough, both of you, and I mean it. Mr. Angel, let's just stick to the matter at hand, okay? Yeah, which is this man's testimony? Which is this man's credibility. 
Maybe you can tell us about those assaults on your record. They were just bar fights. Except for the two domestics from one used to smack my client around. We had a few problems. She's a stripper, right? Mm, and a damn good one. Sure. That's all right if you're not a boyfriend. And you didn't like the fact that she took her clothes off in front of other men? I only hit her when she was flirting or when she stayed at the bar too late. The point is, you hit her. And eventually she left you. We kept in touch. You mean you kept calling to beg her to come back to you? Don't tell him what he thinks he means. Okay. How about I offer him some helpful hints? Anyway, she shows up one night on your front door with this pretty young thing. Well, what is he doing now? Telling us a story? Oh, not a story. The story. She shows up with this hot young chick, and because you're a stupid lout, you forget all about Lee and move in on this young thing. No, that's not... Oh, let me finish. I let you finish. So here you are, slobbering all over this young girl, and Lee catches you and heads back to Toronto. How long does he get to go on like this? Until he makes his point, which he should be getting to very soon. So now you've hooked up with Christy, and pretty soon you're Smacking her around, too. And what does Christy do? You're asking me. Well, I am, if you want to tell me. I don't want to tell you nothing. Christy calls Lee in Toronto and begs her to come and get her. And Lee does it because she's not only a great peeler, she's a great person who knows exactly what a nasty prick you can be. She drives Christy home. Christy gets arrested by the cops for breaching probation, and she feeds them this bullshit about being abducted to save her ass, and my client gets arrested. You finished? No. Are you going to be finished soon? Well, it wouldn't take so long if somebody would just tell the truth. I did tell the truth. Well, part of it. Emil did beat you. All the rest is BS. Emil, you sniveling little worm. When the cops showed up at your front door, why don't you just tell them that? Yeah, smack the little bitch around, but everything else is crapola. I did, but they, you, you know, cops. Ah, you mean they had their theory and your deal was in their back pocket. And this way it was just easier for you. I'm not saying. I already said the things I said I was going to say. I'm not saying anymore. And having heard that said or not said, I'm just wondering how much longer we're going to continue with this trial until the Crown realizes that she's been had. Come on. Be a man. I love the smell of perjury in the courtroom. It smells like victory. What happens to them? I don't know. Who cares? I do. I want both of those lying pieces of shit put in jail. They ruined my life. Let it go. Let them crawl back into the holes. And you just get on with your illustrious career. My illustrious career. I'm 34 and I ride the pole. Yeah, but you do it in a way that'll keep men dreaming, even after they lost their will to live. Thanks. Keep in touch, Jack. Oh, definitely. Hey, you're my new hero. I guess you're my new nightmare. Cameron. Cameron, are you okay? You really think there's something wrong with me? We all do. Shut up, God boy. Uh, listen, Cameron, why don't you let me no, try don't to... No, don't bother. He needs to suffer his own foolishness some more. Can I bring you a coffee? Uh, no, actually, no, no I have to. talk. I really think you need someone to confide in. Someone you can trust. Okay. You just don't let him know where you live. And they yeah. think I'm crazy. Give me a combo. Give me a combo. Give me a Stay up there, you little whore. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Fire. You have to fire. stop. I'm trying to work. No, no, not now. I'm in a groove. It's too loud. Oh, come on. Come on. High score. High score. High score. Okay. Come on. Come on. Get... What is wrong with you? I'm trying to work. This is a place of business. I don't hear the pulsating bass, huh? It's spinning a ball. And why aren't those lights flashing? She unplugged it. Sarah. Why did you do that? Don't you know it's time for fun? My name isn't Sarah, and it's not time for fun. She needs to lighten up. Maybe she's just upset that you turned Mr. Ryder's office into an arcade. Mm -hmm. Wait till she sees the air hockey game. Are we getting one of those? Uh -huh. Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> so how about you, Alice? Huh? Are you up for a little competition, or are you in no fun ever camp, too? No, I could play a little pinball. How about teens? Where's Elliot? Oh, with his new family? Is that serious? Well, maybe. He really loves her kids, or maybe it's just part of his search. He's searching for his new self. What was wrong with his old self? <laughs> Please. Once you get used to it. <laughs> okay, guys, I'll play. But only if we do it seriously. Oh, so yeah, okay, get in there, honey. Play. Get I'm in there. Okay, 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 When I said seriously, I meant quietly. What? I don't mind the year's probation. I can even understand the 20 grand restitution. But I think that you should come with me to those anger management classes because they're probably going to piss me off. That's the spirit. At least I didn't have to apologize to that asshole. That was the most important thing to me. I like this. Good. Why do I like this? I might be putting you in touch with something about yourself. 
Yeah. Maybe a darker part, a more rebellious part. Or yeah. well, a more feminine part. Yeah, all those things. Yeah, and you know what else? I, I like the way it makes my eyes look. This is so you can see the beauty and the suffering of the death pallor reflected on your own face. I mean, if you believe in that sort of thing. A reminder of all the suffering accrued in your life.